Hey everyone, I'm Trace. Thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus again. This is episode five of five on dinosaurs. Make sure you check out the other four episodes we have done. We've talked about what dinosaurs even are. We've talked about how they were first discovered and we've talked about the bone wars and we've talked about fossil hunting and the economics of that. We've even talked about cloning dinosaurs and how they died or at least how we think they died. So much stuff. So make sure you watch those episodes. Today though, we're gonna talk a little bit about chickens. Yeah, it's weird. We're gonna talk about chickens. Alan Grant, paleontologist fictional in Jurassic Park said that in 1993 when the movie came out, that dinosaurs may have more in common with modern day birds than they do reptiles. And at the time, that was pretty controversial. The people in the movie started laughing at them. The little kid called it a six foot turkey. But this is actually real. Like even in the early 90s, Paleontologists, like one of my faves, Jack Horner, he's great, were saying things like this because when you look at the bones of these ancient animals, they look more like the bones that we still have today flying around our skies and sitting on some of our dinner tables. Chicken bones. So what came first, the chicken or the egg? Dinosaurs is the right answer. Researchers estimate the half-life of DNA the point of which half of the bonds of DNA would be broken, similar to radioactivity. You know, when half the DNA is broken down, that's the half-life. That is 521 years. So when the dinosaur dies 65 million years later, there's not a lot of DNA left. And in fact, if you do the math, under the best conditions, DNA would only last about 6.8 million years. And that's literally the best. And you're gonna have it you know, be just such a small amount of DNA by that time. It's incredibly unlikely that we will find DNA that we could use to clone a dinosaur, but we're not gonna clone them, as you probably found out if you were here earlier. The ethics of cloning a dinosaur is also complicated. We should really just do a cloning week. You should tell us in the comments if you want us to do cloning week. But we don't actually need to clone dinosaurs. If the chicken is a dinosaur, why don't we just turn the dinosaur, well, the chicken, into a dinosaur. If the chicken is a dinosaur, why don't we just devolve it back into a dinosaur? Birds have the same defining characteristics as dinosaurs. There's the hole in the hip. The top of the femur has a knob which sticks out to the side that fits in the hip socket of the pelvis. The hip socket has a hole in the center. This supports the weight of the body on the legs. Maybe you remember this. They also share a three-toed foot. This is where the middle finger of the toe is the longest. They have an S-shaped neck. They've got wishbones. Dinosaurs had wishbones too. They had breast bones, crescent-shaped wrists. Dinosaurs shared all these things with modern birds. They also have today feathers. Dinosaurs probably also had feathers. Jack Horner told me when I interviewed him, unfortunately, I didn't interview him with a microphone because I'm a dummy, but he told me that Chances are the reason they didn't have dinosaurs in Jurassic Park movies that went on and on and on is because they had to maintain a consistent story. It didn't have to be scientifically accurate. It's a story. It's a movie. But in reality, paleontologists have known for a while now that dinosaurs probably had feathers, even rudimentary ones. In 2010, Michael Benton of the University of Bristol found color banding preserved in dinosaur fossils and melanosomes, which are the organelles that make pigments in feathers, and it showed that the feathers that they had on the dinosaurs that they found had stripes of light and dark, similar to the stripes you would see in a modern bird flying around today. A team led by Mary Higby Schweitzer of North Carolina State University conducted more tests and revealed the presence of a collagen in T. rex remains, and the collagen was then tested with an antibody that would normally react to chicken collagen, and the antibody reacted, indicating a similar molecular identity, because antibodies are specifically designed to only go after certain things. It shouldn't react to T. rex collagen unless it's related somehow to the chicken collagen, at least molecularly. So today we still have dinosaurs. We just, you know, eat them, <laughs> and they live on farms and stuff. But Jack Horner is working hard to de-evolve a chicken into a dinosaur. Technically, Horner believes that chickens have dormant DNA. And if activated, that DNA could take over 
developing the chicken into some dinosaur mix, essentially. So if you think of the billions of letters of code in a DNA strand, some of those are active and some of those are not. If we can turn on the switches that were dinosaur active and turn off some of the chicken switches, we should get something akin to a modern day dinosaur. So let me give you some examples. When a chicken is developing inside of the egg, its hands resemble more of what you would see in a raptor claw. It's, you know, the three fingers with the middle being the longest, but eventually the gene turns on and fuses all of those together, and that becomes their wings instead of their arms. And if that gene never gets switched on during development, then voila, we've got a chicken dinosaur. Bird embryos still grow dinosaur-like tails when they're in the egg before they absorb that structure. It's through a process called resorption, makes sense. And a crew studying geckos is learning how to turn that off so it doesn't get resorbed. If that happens, we'd end up with a chicken that has the claws and also the tail. And Harvard Medical School's Matthew Harris found that chicken embryos can be switched with little genetic switches to grow teeth, crocodile-like cone-shaped teeth inside of a chicken's mouth. All of those things, leftover traits from when they were dinosaurs. The last steps that we would have to do then, if we have a tail, we have teeth, we've got claws, the dinosaurs had feathers, so we don't have to worry too much about that. All we need now are the arms. We don't have a plan for the arms yet, we still have to figure that out. There's DNA in there somewhere, we just have to find it. But this answers, the 65 million year old question, dinosaurs obviously tasted like chicken because they are chickens. I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat a chicken slash dinosaur for dinner and it's gonna be great. Seriously though, go watch the YouTube video, Chicken Walking with an Artificial Tail. I don't know why it looks like it has, you know, a plunger on its butt, but if you look at it this way, it looks like a dinosaur. Just use your imagination, it's super interesting. This isn't some pipe dream. Jack Horner, paleontologist, says, from a quantitative point of view, we're about 50% of the way there. That's crazy. Dinosaurs capture our imaginations. This is one of the things that they do. Because they're big, they are ancient, we will probably never see a dinosaur alive, at least not the ones we're digging up as fossils. The fossils are so massive and they create such a delight when you see them that we give them names, we fight over them, we buy and sell them for millions of dollars. Ever since we're kids, people memorize dinosaur names. They learn all about these things. We make movies about them. We've been doing that since movies began. Some of the first movies were about dinosaurs because we loved them and we've loved them for so long. And yet, if we could de-evolve a chicken into a dinosaur, it wouldn't be the same, right? Wouldn't feel the same. Something different about it. I think we kind of love the idea that we'll never see these again. That way they live more in our imaginations than they do in our real life. And that's pretty cool, because imagination is awesome. Why don't you let us know down in the comments what you thought of our dinosaur series. Make sure you keep coming back to Test Tube Plus so you get our next series as well. So you should subscribe here on YouTube so you can do that. If you haven't listened to us as an audio podcast, go check that out. You can find it on iTunes. There's a link in the description. And it's all five of our episodes squished into one. So subscribe there as well. And if you haven't yet, give us a rating. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. I'm Trace Dominguez. You can find me on Twitter at Trace Dominguez. Thanks for watching Test Tube Plus.